let me see give me a moment i'll just ask her to join her huh? one minute हाँ जॉय स्टार्ट मैडम या जो तो दिस आर ऑल आर स्टूडेंट्स आर गोइंग टू बी ऑन द यूट्यूब वी हैव लाइव स्ट्रीम या ओके बिकॉज हियर वी आर पार्डन इज द बॉल इज द वॉल्यूम बेटर ना पार्डन इज द साउंड बेटर ना या साउंड साउंड इज लिटिल बेटर ओके यस आई विल ट्राइ टू स्पीक क्लोजर टू द माइक्रोफोन It's little better. Okay. So shall we start, madam? Yes, yeah, start, start. Yes. A very good morning to one and all. I am Dr. Rishikesh Dharvi, an assistant professor in the Department of Zoology, MD College. On behalf of the Department of Zoology, MD College, I welcome all the respected dignitaries of today's program. Dr. Nandini Deshmukh, Madam, retired head and head of the Zoology Department, uh, Kirti College. Uh, Dr. Gitanjali Deshmukh, Madam, Principal Scientist in the Fisheries Resource Harvest and Post Harvest Division, CIF Mumbai. Dr. Chaya Pandey, Madam, Principal MD College. Uh, Dr. Vaishali Somani, Madam, HOD of the Zoology Department, MD College. My fellow colleagues from the Zoology Department, MD College, teachers from the Zoology Fraternity of the University of Mumbai. and all the students present in today's program uh, we have also in our this session uh, dr vinay deshmukh sir's son mr jyotirmay deshmukh and his family members and deshmukh sir's friends and colleagues from cmfri i welcome you all on behalf of the department of zoology md college uh, we all have gathered here for dr vinay deshmukh sir's memorial lecture organized by the zoology department to honor the memories of late dr deshmukh sir who has who was a distinguished personality in the field of marine fisheries and was very closely associated with the zoology department of md college may i now request our principal madam dr chaya pant se please address the gathering uh, thank you rishikesh sir good morning to all of you on be on behalf of the zoology department of marshidanand college i welcome dr nandini deshmukh dr geetanjali deshmukh dr jyotirmay deshmukh mrs madhuvati bhaskarwar all my teacher colleagues dr vaishali somani all the staff from cmfri and my dear students wish you all a very good morning today we have gathered here for the memorial lecture on dr vinay deshmukh it is since two years now that our most favorite scientist dr vinay deshmukh has bid a farewell farewell to us today is the second year 19th of june was the day two years back when he left us all as already you all know that dr vinay deshmukh is a former was a former principal scientist and scientist in charge of mumbai research center of cmfri he was renowned for his outstanding intervention in marine fishery research in india especially in maharashtra deshmukh sir began his career as a scientist in cmfri in the year 1977 and he made a major contribution to understanding and management of maharashtra's marine fishery he has inspired many young scientists and many researchers vinay deshmukh sir has been very close to me and my college whether it was syllabus framing whether it was statistics or whether it was identification of pinnid or non pinnid prawns 
he was right behind us too and he has literally taken care and nurtured us for every new topic which has been introduced in the syllabus not only that both both nandini madam and vinay deshmukh sir are like a family to md college he the his major contribution was in the work for which includes the dynamics and modeling of nord pinnid prawns of maharashtra biology and stock assessment of pinnid and non pinnid prawns crabs lobsters effect of the persein net on the ecosystem and biodiversity of maharashtra waters and recommendation of the fleet size regulation to the state authority and assessment of or uh, an impact of oil spillage on the fish environment and livelihood aspects of the fisherman such a great personality it is really very difficult to forget him and today we would like to in honor of deshmukh sir we would like to have a memorial lecture by dr geetanjali deshmukh who was also a very close friend of vinay deshmukh sir madam thank you very much for accepting our invitation we are very honored today we have got one more friend of ours mrs madhumati bhaskarwar who is joining us from delhi and who would also like to speak a few words because right from we were doing msc we have been close with the deshmukh families so our student he has both mr and mrs deshmukh have influenced us as students as teachers and what all what we are today we owe a lot to them uh dr jyotirmay thank you very much on a short notice for joining us and we are very honored to have you here i welcome you all once again and uh i hope we are going to have a very nice uh, uh session today and a good interaction with deshmukh ke madam thank you very much thank you so much madam uh dr vinay deshmukh sir was a distinguished marine biologist a great teacher and a humble human an inspiration to all of us molding and inspiring lives of many students including myself deshmukh sir was a great support for our department and was always like a pillar whenever we required his guidance may i now request dr jyotirmay deshmukh to kindly uh, share some of his memories dr jyotirmay uh, can can you hear me uh, thank you dr dani uh, am i audible yes you are audible if you can please speak little bit loudly okay i'm going to try and uh, scream into this microphone uh, is it better now yes okay um just to thank, thank you professor panse uh, and uh, all her colleagues for uh, bearing to listen to a person whose last contact with biology was several years ago now probably decades ago but i think my uh life connection my umbilical cord with biology has never been severed because of my connection to my parents and i think one of the most important values that i received from both of my parents uh but specifically from my father uh is this uh is the training on how to be a good scientist and uh, i just to speak to uh three things that i think uh, made were were contributions that i remember through various anecdotes in my interactions with my father uh, that i want to kind of share with you all and uh, really the three things i'm thinking about uh, in what makes a good scientist are the spirit of inquiry or exploration following the scientific method uh, precision that's really one the second aspect is a uh, passion for any topic and the third aspect is honesty and integrity in in the whole scientific process uh, so without 
trying to sound too preachy uh, and uh, official. Let me sh share some light-hearted stories from my childhood, which I think uh, highlight some of these aspects. So uh, one of the first uh, memories from my childhood is uh, that my father used to have to supervise his technical assistants at Perivar. And uh, part of the process at, uh, was getting up very early in the morning, getting into the government jeep, accompanied by uh, scientists wearing their smelliest clothes because you're going to a fish landing center. So you, of course, are not going to wear your best clothes there. Uh, scientists would be wearing uh, gum boots, as uh, we used to call them. And I see uh, Dr. Chakravarti has joined. He would be one of them in the Jeep with us. And uh, we would all be uh, kind of going to ferry bars. And the purpose there was to uh, basically check whether uh, the technical assistants uh, of CMFRI were doing the job that they were supposed to be doing. Now, I was perhaps five or six years old, but that did not stop my father from starting to tell me, oh, these, these are female prawns. These are male prawns. Look at that part. That's the ovary. The green thing that you see there, that's what you should look for. And then he would go into fecundity levels and, I don't know, various kinds of biological things that thankfully I have now forgotten. But... I remember this F1, F2, F3, F4 things that he would, at some point he told me, go sit with that assistant and help him take the statistics. And I was a five-year-old taking those films, putting them on a ruler, measuring their length and their weight and so on. Now, fast forward several years when, actually now I am a computer scientist and I'm a professor here in a university in the US, but my first introduction to computer science came in CMFRI. And CMFRI in those days had bought today what sounds very exotic, but it was a PCXT. And uh, it's one of the most advanced machines that existed in India in those days. And believe it or not, these machines did not have a hard drive. They had two floppy drives. And my father would take me to uh, his office with him on Saturdays and Sundays, because of course he was that kind of a person who would work Saturdays and Sundays. And uh, the task given to me was, you have to study for these exams. You have to finish uh, practicing these questions. And if you sit uh, quietly in a corner and work for two, three hours, I will let you play some games on our office computer. So this is 1986 that we are talking about. And in 1986, that was my first exposure to a computer. And uh, I think I never looked at uh, any other thing the same way. Computers became a passion for me. And in fact, a few years later, the same shrimp that I uh, was telling you guys about, the F1, F2, F3, my father uh, started talking to me about biostatistics, how this FISAT software was giving him headaches, and how uh, I should help him figure out what uh, his uh, what his colleagues uh, need to figure out in, in making effective use of that software, help his students kind of figure out any errors that they were making, and so on. I mean, another thing I'm kind of trying to highlight in these stories were no interaction with Vinay Deshmukh ever happened without the topic of fish ever coming up. Okay, uh, there's a running joke in my family that whenever you even say fur, then the starting letter for fish, you are soon to be rewarded with about an, about an hour's lecture on fisheries. And my mom would roll her eyes and she was like, Hale talu hento, right? Which is Marathi for, there he goes again. And uh, that was the thing with Baba. He breathed, lived uh, fisheries. That was the life for him which goes to my second topic, right? There, there, there was this immense passion for the field that he had, this immense passion for fisheries, which did not end in his nine to five job. When he came back home, he would still talk about fish. When we would be cooking fish, he would be still talking about fish. When we would go to the fish market to buy fish, he would be talking not in terms of Bombil taza heka, but in terms of the species of the bombil that he, he sees in front of him. Uh, a lot of my childhood was uh, kind of bombarded with scientific names of various fish, uh, which I have 
now much if we forgotten uh, bring has a more finite amount of space but that was how a bringing uh, with vinay deshmukh was there was a lot of passion for the field that he kind of ca uh, really carried uh, this burning passion for the field that he had with him the other thing that uh, i think was something unique that i learned from my father was this the spirit of inquiry and exploration uh, there are several friends and uh, family members with whom i have passionately discussed about fish of course when my passion for fish starts and ends with eating them not studying them so whenever we talk about fish i realize that our family was special in the way that we ate literally any crab that fishermen caught in the sea and this was all because of my father we would try all kinds of experimented fish many fish that several even fish of the leonardos have never tried and the reason for that was the spirit of exploration let's try something new let's get out of our comfort zone we eat pomfret all the time we eat mackerel all the time let's try this new thing uh, let's try this a new uh, kind of squid let's try a new recipe this was something that i really imbibed from my father which is at some point of life if you are pursuing a career in science you have to leave the comfort zone that you are in the thing that you know well and you have to go outside that comfort zone and try to experiment try to new learn something new try to explore something new that was one other thing that i strongly remember and the final thing i, I don't want to bore you all with my reminiscences but i think one thing uh, that I, i think was uh, something that i uh, did not appreciate as much when i was growing up in mumbai under the same uh, roof as my father you know i mean the, the time i left mumbai i was 21 years old so most of my memories in mumbai with my father are, are as me as an angsty teenager who of course everything your parents say is wrong and uh, how you have everything right right that's the teenage age but as i left home reflecting back i realized that there were several things that unconsciously seep into my behavior and those are definitely things that are imparted by my father's uh, values or morals and i think one of the things that i distinctly remember was his commitment to honesty and integrity and this is one uh, little anecdote we had once as a family gone to nehru center there was some kind of a shopping exhibition we did our shopping we uh, got into the bst bus that was supposed to take us back to shivaji park where we live and uh, about two or three stops away from worli my father is like no no i have to get down and i asked him well what happened he's like no i just realized that the guy at the counter gave me 50 rupees extra and we are like why are you going to go now it's late we are already in the bus we are halfway home he's like no 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 i cannot take this extra money so he got down from the bus took a bus in the opposite direction went back to nehru center returned the 50 rupees and took a second bus to come back home uh, i mean this kind of honesty and integrity at that point i think that i remember slightly irritated with him because he did not accompany us home and decided to go back but later as i grew up i realized that this kind of honesty and integrity as a person is something that you need to have when you are even doing science when we do experiments in science we need our experiments to be repeatable if we need our experiments to be uh, such that other people can do them and we should be very careful about how we present our experiments and with the honesty with which we apply our um, our scientific method and i think this is equally important in today's science where it's easy to publish something to get a publication but not being thorough or honest with respect to the method to in order to present the results that we that that exist and this happens not only in biological sciences but this is something that in the broader world today we see that it's something it's something that needs to happen in public health uh, in all kinds of sciences so i just to summarize i think these three value uh, value which places importance on exploration uh, the spirit of inquiry and the scientific method a value for having passion for the topic that you have chosen to embrace as your career and really the honesty and integrity 
uh, aspects of, 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 of existence. And uh, the one final thing I would like to say is that science is a highly social process. We might all think of science as something very rational, as something that is very results oriented, but at the end of the day, science is a social process. When we publish something, publish new scientific results, these are vetted by a team of our peers. Science faces society and society faces science. Because science is a social process, every scientist has a moral obligation to do the science correctly. Otherwise, it ceases to be science. And this is, I think, one of the main things that is a takeaway message for me as a part of my childhood upbringing from my father. And with that, I would like to thank Professor Panse. Uh, and it's great to see a lot of old friends here. Actually, my first memories of uh, this is going to be a little embarrassing, Chaya Maushi, so uh, brace for that. So uh, my first memories of Chaya Maushi, Madhu Maushi, and a few others are as a three to four year old kid in Verawal, and uh, Chaya Maushi, Madhu Maushi had, were all still, I think, MSc students at Institute of Science, and they had come on an excursion. And my father, being, being the person he was, was pranking them by scaring them. I think at one point he put a sheet over his head and went outside the kitchen sink and scared. Uh, I, I think I don't remember now if it was Shaya Mausi or Madhu Mausi, but he pranked them, scared them, uh, and he, he, that was his uh, his personality. I mean, he was always a little bit of a prankster, a little bit of a joker with a great sense of humor, and. Uh, this, these are some of my early memories with uh, some of the people I see here. In fact, on that very trip, I also remember going on a collection uh, trip with uh, with the students, and I remember having uh, found uh, octopuses or octopi, I guess. And also, uh, I think there is a picture my mother has somewhere of Chaya Maushi, Madhu Maushi, perhaps my mom, and me standing together holding a lobster. So if my mom has that picture, maybe she can share it with this audience. It might uh, bring back some memories. All right. Thank you, everyone, for inviting me. This was a great pleasure. And I wish you a very good luck for this uh, event. And looking forward to hear the other speakers. Looking forward to hearing the other speakers. Thank you, Jyotu. Uh, Refreshed all our memories. <laughs> indeed. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Jyotirmay, for sharing your memories with us and his inspirations. Indeed, it was always an enriching and learning experience just listening and interacting with Sir. May I now request Dr. Madhumi, uh, Madhumati Bhaskar, Bhaskarwan to kindly share her memories. Dr. Madhumati. Madhu, you are on mute. You are on mute, Madhu. Can, I, can you hear me now? Yeah. Thank you so much. But let, let me make a correction. I am not a doctor. <laughs> I'm just a patient all my life. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, giving me time to speak. Actually, after listening to Jyotu, I was like in a trance, you know. I thanked you. Thank you, Jyotu, for taking us back down the memory lane. So many memories were refreshed when he spoke about uh, Vinay to us. I really don't know where to begin. There are so many adjectives and I'm running short of adjectives when I start talking about if I have to speak about Vinay. Uh, if you ask me personally, he was literally like a brother to me, like a brother to me. Uh, myself, Chaya, we were together at MSC and when we were out of college full of energy and uh, like little fledglings, you know, all set to swim. In the ocean. And it was, uh, I would say it was Vinay who actually mentored us all through the ocean of this teaching arena, I must say, because we were enthusiastically applying everywhere for colleges and for jobs and trying to get into teaching line. And he, it was Vinay and also Nandini along with Vinay, both of them, they were like our mentors who literally held our fingers and they taught us how to apply, where to apply, how to face an interview, what to speak, what not to speak. These are things, you know, when, when you're just fresh out of college, you think you're on top of the world and, uh, but it doesn't, that doesn't, uh, that's not the way we go about. So he actually mentored us how to go about these things. And uh, I would say as in our teaching um, career, from time to time, we would always take his guidance and he would keep teaching us how to, 
handle a topic how to handle interviews how to handle people and i think every time we went to their house it was like a second home to us whenever we went there and we would always be entertained with so many things and i remember from that uh, dadar somewhere close by the very good badas patata vadas you would never forget to get those for us uh, and uh, of course a uh, big serving of knowledge so much of learning was involved every time we visited them both of them so that was one side and uh, when he talked when jyotu talked about viravan so many of my memories also were refreshed it was really we, we, we saw the other side of vinay on the one side he was a sincere teacher very uh, teaching us very seriously the different lessons of life when we went to viravan we stayed with him for about a week and uh, with the whole of the gang our, our msc batch was there along with our professor masuri kar his wife and uh, fun it was fun you know and going out on field trips on the beaches with him was really fun exciting the kind of uh, jokes he would crack over there he was actually a prankster no doubt about him that was the other side of him uh, he was a very serious learner serious teacher but at the same time there were very lighter moments when you were with him and it was always it was never boring Uh, going out with him on this uh, so called serious field trips it was full of fun and then of course after coming back home it was not only collecting and was seeing what all the samples we have collected and all what we have studied after coming home it was another vinay in the kitchen as uh, jyotu rightly said he was so much interested in fish every aspect of fish not only talking about fish their life their life cycles and all the details but also which fish to eat how to eat how to cut he asa kapaycha he tasa kapaycha ha masala to masala and he most of the times his uh, fish and kitchen would revolve around saraswat versus ckp cuisine how the ckp cuisine was superior to the saraswat cuisine and the nandini would try to prove no 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 this cuisine is better but we were the ultimate gainers because we would get to eat both the both the cuisines and we really enjoyed it thoroughly and uh, regarding uh, talking about viraval tip this one more anecdote i remember when he talked about it i just remember uh, we had gone to gir forest on one day to see the gir forest and uh, there is some stream some little river flowing in that the gir forest and there was a buffalo which was sitting inside that water and vinay wanted us to sit on the buffalo and click the picture so we have a picture myself nandini and a very small jyotu i think was 4 5 years old three of us sitting sitting on the buffalo and he clicked the picture and we were so scared all the time that any any moment the buffalo would decide to stand up and then we would be in the water but that kind of a person was vinay that was in lighter moments he would be a really wonderful person actually i really don't know from where to begin and where to start i can go on and on talking about vinay the kind of impact he has had on our total personality development as a teacher whatever i think i am i've learned so much from him all the time and uh, in, unfortunately even uh, before he passed away just a month ago he talked to me and he was talking about his book i i was talking about my book which i was in the process of writing and he was so interested send me a copy and i said definitely i'll send you one and uh, which i i really feel sorry i could never show him that book but i did see his book which was completed by nandini very well written and so that sometimes makes me feel very sad i would have got some very constructive suggestions from him if he had seen my book which is on lipozomes uh, uh he was a mentor he was a friend philosopher guide i don't know everything packed in one i really cannot define him but uh, whatever he, uh, he has i will always remain indebted heavily indebted to vinay and as we as uh, jyotu also rightly said we would we were so much uh, as part of the family we were part of the family deshmukh family vinay nandini jyotu grew with us and i like, we can never forget that and that has a great, has a, a very great impact on us as teachers as persons thank you vinay thank you so much wherever you are stay blessed and stay happy thank you so much for giving me the time thank you so much madhumiti uh, madhumiti madam uh for expressing your memories and sharing uh, your thoughts uh, indeed both deshmukh madam and deshmukh sir had been inspiration to many students molding their careers their lives 
we also Madam, have with us Madhavati Madam has refreshed all our memories and i also welcome dr chakraborty and dr golden cordres who are here with us and uh, sir thank you very much both of you all for joining us today thank you thank you thank you madam thank welcome, you welcome sir thank you it's my pleasure uh, to be here uh chakraborty sir would you like to speak a few words my request i will like to speak a few words because uh, but i don't know from where to start and where to end that is a problem <laughs> many of you may not be knowing that uh, our life started from delhi we were interviewed on the same day in delhi for the ars examination and uh, good morning everybody madam principal madam thank you very much for inviting me prishikesh dalvi gitanjali madam madhu madam and all the people who are here and uh, our we were interviewed on the same day in delhi in the month of may 1976 then uh, we joined cochin both of us joined cfpri i joined on 14th january he joined on 17th january like that our life started after a few maybe about a month or so february nandini also came and joined us so that is how our life started and when i came to mumbai i was very much uh, close to nandini's father nandini's mother their whole family suresh dada then uh, sister in law then deshmukh and uh, deshmukh used to tell us that he is the darkest in the family can you believe it <laughs> he when i saw kiran when i saw shama and when i saw rajan and others his father and mother then i understood that why he is telling that he is the darkest in the family you can understand or you can make out the color of the other family members <laughs> deshmukh was very very sincere with his work when he started to work in mumbai center of sima para in november 1977 we joined here and throughout the day he was taking a, taking the samples of acetus and other non finite prawns which were naturally smaller in size and with the help of a microscope he was doing work throughout from say 9:30 or 10 onwards up to 4:35 he was on the microscope and as a teacher as uh, jyotu was telling me just now when i came to his house jyotu was hardly 3 and a half year old he was telling me the morphometric of a fish <laughs> <laughs> this is total land this is standard land this is pelvic fin this is pectoral fin like that jyotu was explaining me then uh, i could understand who has taught all those things and how nicely it has been taught many incidents happened with him because we were together for nearly 40 years we were together working i left cmfri in 1998 and came to cip and i was a teacher there for 18 years somewhere in uh, 2017 i believe we came to take 16a form one lady came there with her english i could understand slightly bengali accented so i told her that uh, he is my friend dr deshmukh he is whole time in research for the last 40 years but i am teaching for the last 18 years but dr deshmukh is a better teacher than me <laughs> that lady was also she also happened to be a retired teacher from a degree college teaching history like that many of his habits sincerity as uh, just now jyotu was telling about food and other thing we will go to ratnagiri we will go to malwan uh, we had gone to uh, many places like that he will try to find out a unique fish which he had not taken i remember uh, in chiplun he went to the market and searched so many days on the last day he found a very big sized capri that is our pampas chinensis he brought it and he told the hotel fellow how to cook it also so unfortunately he is no not there and uh, aditi was rightly telling all the recipes which father had had gone away after his death it's very unfortunate that we lost him so early he would have helped us in so many ways especially his way of teaching his research and his sincerity 
we have to learn a lot and most of the students here who have been influenced by him have learned that thing very nicely we lost a very good worker in crustacean fisheries whether it is crab whether it is lobster whether it is non finite prawn finite prawn everything he was so nice in fact uh, he worked on a concert project by icr that is we call it ap ses fund in that he has done the recruitment and stock and recruitment studies which has not been done even now for many of the fish and he has done it for the finite prawn that was a remarkable contribution another contribution by him is the quarters 38 quarters he has got for the cmfri staff by managing to go to delhi several times meeting the pwd officials icr officials dg ddg everybody there he managed to get the quarters now nobody is scared from anywhere to come to mumbai because they know a three bedroom quarter is already there for me to occupy so that was his best contribution the work culture he has inculcated among the technical staff among the scientific staff among the administrative staff of steam fry that is also remarkable uh, i remember he used to come to my house and he used to telephone beforehand my wife that i will take only rohu and you have to fry it in you have to prepare it in mustard oil so like that he used to he was very fond of eating and he was also very fond of giving very good food to the people uh, we lost him so early that was very unfortunate but uh, his papers his publications his books and uh, the inspiration he has given to the next generation that will carry and we will have that in so many years to come thank you very much everybody and i am saying jyotirmay after a long long time thank you very much for all of you thank you sir thank you, so thank much, you sir. very much thank you so much uh, chokrabarti sir for sharing such such sweet memories administrative capabilities and uh, deshmukh sir's research achievements indeed there was um, so much to learn from deshmukh sir thank you so much sir uh, may i now request uh, my colleague uh, ms suprita naik to kindly introduce our guest speaker dr geetanjali deshmukh madam uh thank you sir uh, i take this opportunity to introduce you all to our uh, speaker today dr geetanjali deshmukh madam who is presently the principal scientist at icar central institute of fisheries education madam has done her masters in botany from pune university and phd in phycology from hokkaido university japan she holds a research experience of around 34 years madam has also worked at nio Nash, uh, national institute of oceanography for 10 years on various aspects of marine vegetation mainly distribution ecology life history and tissue culture of seaweeds gitanjali madam has experience of working at gujarat ecology society a state government undertaking on integrated marine and coastal area management and ei studies for gulf of kutch and gulf of pamb at cife madam has uh, worked on uh, phytoplankton as life feed for aquaculture utilization of seaweed uh, seaweed as food reservoirs uh, and germplasm preservation of algae ecology and utilization of seaweed in fish products madam has also guided 16 students for their masters in fishery science uh, two are ongoing and madam has six students who had been awarded phd madam holds 120 publications overall which includes research papers book chapters books review articles popular articles and technical reports we welcome you madam looking forward for your today's session over to you gitanjali ma'am thank you very much for inviting me for this uh, session i am very much honored and i thank uh, panse madam and uh, devi sir for inviting me much of uh, uh, dr chakravarti sir has said and uh, all of you uh, had more interaction with uh, deshmukh sir comparatively i was not very much uh, with him for long time 
but my first experience i would like to share with you for some i, I joined cip in 2001 and uh, immediately for some administrative work i was assigned to uh, visit uh, semfri at that time it was in main mumbai so i went there and uh, a person about a person you don't have to uh, listen from him how he is from his colleagues what you learn is they speak more about a person's uh, character and person's integrity and a person's uh, intellectual uh, power so when i was there i spent almost whole day for that work and i learned so many things about him so many things right from the uh, lowest uh, worker or the research fellows working in semfri at that time to the his senior most colleagues everybody held uh, dr deshmukh in such a high esteem and also later on uh, like i was uh, that time i was in aquaculture department then i was posted in frm so i was with dr chakravarti and uh, because of uh, our board of study member he was always our uh, guide to do and uh, about coursework and uh, regarding the other students who wanted to do research in fisheries he was uh, uh, being a board of study member uh, he was always guiding and apart from that uh, as everybody said he, he is uh, such a good natured person that uh, nobody can uh, not like him like that and as i think dr madhu said that uh, he was like brother he was like brother to us elder brother always elder brother so i uh, really thank and i am so much honored that uh, uh, they invited me uh, to give a lecture on uh, his memory so i would like to start if everybody is okay with it i will be talking about marine algae because that is my core uh, subject though i strayed here and there in fishery science and ecology but my main is uh, ecology, uh, algae Massively. So uh, I would like to share that. So I hope the slides are uh, visible. Yes, madam, they are visible. Thank you. So marine algae has a vast. Uh, there are so many issues and opportunities are there. And as uh, recently I had opportunity to give a TV talk in Marathi on uh, seaweed cultivation. So there I mentioned that uh, we call uh, sea as Ratnakar in Marathi Sanskrit. So one of the Ratna or jewel of the sea, which has been not been uh, given much attention, at least in India, is marine algae or seaweed. So let us see what, uh, how it is important. It's not moving. It's not moving. I will restart it. Yes, madam. Please reshare it. So, ocean is Ratnakar, and one of the jewel is uh, the sea, the seaweed. So there are actually, I have just talked a little about uh, how uh, our sea coast is, since we are talking about uh, many marine environments and uh, the, where all the seaweed occurs. So, here if you see, there are uh, different kinds of coasts are there. And uh, we are blessed with uh, more than 8,000 kilometers of uh, sea coast, where we have three gulfs and uh, many estuaries and uh, deltas present. And different kind of uh, ecosystems are there. In Kerala, then Andaman Nicobar Island ecosystems, all these uh, 
coastline, although it is not suitable, there are some areas which are very sensitive and very suitable for seaweed, seaweed uh, uh, natural uh, production and uh, cultivation as well. So there are different uh, coastal sensitive ecosystems. Since I had been working on the coastal ecosystems also and of late, uh, being coming into CIP, I was teaching in coastal zone management. There also, sir, used to always uh, tell me many things about different coasts. So here there are uh, different coastline like mangroves are there, sand dunes are there, then sea turtle breeding grounds are there, coral reefs, uninhabited islands are there. And uh, many of the coral reefs and the uh, uninhabited islands and uh, many uh, areas like uh, bays and uh, small uh, rocky intertidal areas are very conducive for uh, seaweed growth. So just in short, marine biodiversity, where all uh, they go, seaweeds mostly go, grow in the intertidal area where there is a, a gradual, most of the seaweed growth is found uh, along the uh, intertidal area where the continental shelf has a gradual slope. Like uh, in uh, Gulf of Kutch or Gulf of Manar, they are more uh, occurring. Or now, of course, uh, it may be sounding a little basic, but I am uh, talking for the benefit of uh, since uh, uh, Dr. Dalvi said that there are students uh, are there. So just for their benefits, uh, I will just say in short that uh, they grow mostly during in the intertidal area where the high tide and low tide uh, are there in between. And uh, it is a eupotic zone, the seaweeds grow. And basically, they need some substratum to grow. The, it will not grow in the sandy uh, bottom. Uh, it needs a rocky substratum or a coralline substratum where uh, they can hold uh, the, the base. So these are the some of the gifts of marine biodiversity. The ocean has about 70% uh, of the earth surface and there are more than 300,000 subscribed species of plants and animals live in the ocean. So in the plants, uh, they include the, of course, uh, phytoplankton also. So these are again. So Joel Marine Algae will go, come to. So it can grow in the marine ecosystem also. I think something is wrong here, going up and down. So Mangu also, I was working and he was very interested that uh, what are the work is going on in uh, mango ecosystem as well. So here there are some of the mango systems. In being in Mumbai, we all are familiar with mangoes, but the importance of mango is much more that uh, not only ecology, but also economic of the people, it uh, helps very much as all the Sir's favorite prawns, they are mostly grow, uh, come to the estuarine area for breeding. And he grows in the mangrove area. And uh, called Ulva Lobata. This Ulva is also known as the sea lettuce. And we can skip some of the plants. These are the mangrove uh, which are having the, I think I'll skip this. Got mixed up. I'm so sorry about this. I'm talking about mangrove is that because mangrove is also one of the area where the seaweed cultivation can uh, happen. This, um, my Connection is very unstable, so it may go at some time. Today, the institute net is a bit. So this is importance of mangroves, which is, of course, for, for most important is nursery ground for uh, many uh, fish uh, larvae. And uh, it is renewable uh, source for fuel and offers protection for against coastal erosion. If, if you are seeing oplet uh, in Google, many times it's coming that if the if you save mangrove, your coral reefs are also saved and uh, your uh, uh, coastal area is also saved because if the mangroves are safe. So 
being actually why i'm giving mangroves also is because uh, we when i was in nio uh, our lab was civil mangrove lab and uh, though i was working on civil mostly we are working on any i mean whatever the work comes to us so we i used to do a lot of uh, mangrove work also and uh, i had a project on uh, marine protected areas to search for marine protected areas of maharashtra coast so at that time uh, the civil mangrove lab people we traveled from mumbai uh, almost dahanu uh, northern most of maharashtra to ready each and every cross road we took we went to uh, the sea and uh, we see what what the biodiversity is there that is why some of the mangrove and the biodiversity i was showing you because it was very interesting that uh, how the mangroves uh, also support lot of uh, economically important uh, seabird species so these are some of the of the importance the some of the popular medicines are also are uh, extracted from mangrove area and there are uh, people who you this is the ecological like how it uh, helps in the nitrogen recycling of course the foremost use had been you for the uh, firewood production and uh, mumbai has killed it this is our seven bungalows and uh, this is dr chakravarti remember sir you remember uh, we were given a task uh, to go and see about the how the mangroves are there in the some bad smell was coming so we were given a survey of doing the mangrove survey of seven bungalows area so this is the picture how the mangroves are being killed for uh, salt or uh, this is ratnagiri where people collect lot of mussels and clams from the area and the whole lot of area is cleared now there is lot of difference is there they have built a jetty there small and of course the andaman they have made a nice uh, path way to go into the mangroves to observe the crocodile and uh, nice the birds are also there so tourism is one of the attraction of mangrove so there are of course fishery resource is much uh, everybody else knows more than me fishery resource i am not a fishery person but still i would say that uh, a even small child uh, can uh, collect prawn or crabs then uh, the flat fish from the mangrove area and the rich you can see the mangrove nematophores are covered with the seaweeds uh, this seaweed species is monostoma and this was found once upon a time uh, in abundance in ratnagiri also and in the uh, achra also but after it uh, the system is changing so much that you hardly get any thing this was what before and this is what is present so you can see there is a difference in the a lot of difference in the biodiversity changing due to our our own uh, doings you can see at the this is again at ratnagiri uh, picture taken that how much clams are uh, produced and just dumped and this was done uh, commercially uh. so there is very little mangroves are under the currently under any active management so what is necessary is that uh, many colleges goldin is there goldin knows uh, and goldin has been very actively uh, involved in the in thana mangrove and thana history and uh, thanic creek uh, conservation and bird sanctuary So no mangrove is man's grave. We can say that so conservation is very very important.
these are some of the posters which we had uh, asked our students to make now i'll just brief on coral reefs also before i come to my main jewel so reefs are uh, resistant structure everybody knows that they are unique in being in form now we are having the uh, we are having actually all sorts of uh, reefs which are the fringing reef barrier reef and at all fringing reef is there in uh, gulf of kutch and uh, gulf of some gulf of manar also then uh, barrier is type is present in andaman and atolls are there in lakshadweep so we are having almost all kind of uh, reef uh, occurrences along the indian coast and uh, as everybody knows that uh, reefs are very sensitive ecologically sensitive because uh, uh, the corals take so long to grow that uh, it takes almost 1 uh, cm or 5 cm to grow it takes about a year to grow so they are very fragile of uh, calcium carbonate uh, nature but we all know that they are very beautiful and they support a very uh, uh, huge number of ornamental fishes then uh, there was the most uh, like close relation and uh, they are also the reefs are also uh, being uh, exploited for these uh, fishes for the aquarium purpose then the coral itself uh, they like they are home to 33% of all known fish uh, fish species nursery 25% of all marine species and uh, they protect 20% of the world coast from wave erosion the coral reefs so there is some differences there uh, a lot of ornamental fishes are there there are many adoptions are there about the and they change their colors and change their uh, strategies adapting to the reef uh, they are very beautiful everybody knows that there are so many movies are also there uh, showing the how the reef fishes are important so this will skip this, this was for the students and they are also you know they clean the uh, fish i mean they clean the coral coral reef herbivores are there so they are sometimes are not uh, welcome for the coral reef and uh, they can some of the cleaning fishes are also there so they clean the debris uh, uh, get uh, occurring on the corals there so that is why there is a symbiosis in happening then apart from uh, these uh, species there are many other uh, species are there which are uh, sea snakes and uh, turtles that are found so seven recognized uh, species of sea, tur sea turtles are found on the coral reefs of some parts of world and we uh, coral reefs are also where they are associated there are also the turtle breeding grounds nearby the coastal areas then of course the sea dugong the most important are the uh, coral reef animals other animals like sponges which are very highly uh, important as a bioactive substances are uh, being taken from them then echinoderms mollusks all these are uh, present in the coral reef uh, very much uh, in diversified area these are some of the sponges and sponges have a lot of uh, bioactive substances and uh, unfortunately we are been uh, exploiting all these uh, sea jewels from the sea for many things uh, for of course for human uh, benefit but uh, we have to give back also to nature the same thing so that uh, our next generations also can see and can benefit by them so the echinoderms like sea stars i don't have to tell 
ground of pass, which is not good for coral reef fishes, which is the main predator. Sea urchin. You will find see a lot of sea urchin along the, the uh, Maharashtra coast also. Then uh, the, this is giant clam, which is found in, I've seen it in uh, Andaman Nicobar and Lakshadweep Island also. Sea snails are there. A lot of crabs and crustaceans. I thought of including all these beautiful beauties of the ocean for the giving, uh, I mean, my homage to uh, Sir that uh, he was <laughs> one of the best worker in the crustaceans and all the biodiversity. So I thought of uh, sharing all the slides uh, for the students. And of course, the corals are very, very precious. Like, uh, at least in Indians, we all have that uh, jewelry, coral jewelry, and many uh, things. There are different kinds of corals which are used for uh, jewelry, black coral, red coral, and which are very, very expensive. So here are some of the coral jewelries I've seen. So these are the jewelry of corals which are being used. Red and pink coral. Again, some of the beautiful. I think I searched so much, you know, for these. They are really beautiful. And, uh, but unfortunately, we don't grow them to use them. We just collect it from the nature and process and use. So that is why now the coral reefs and everywhere uh, there is a exploitation of uh, this marine uh, jewel. And of course, the corals have been used uh, in our uh, Indian medicine from ancient time. We all know that Praval Bhasma, which is used in uh, Ayurveda, it is a part of uh, well, very few uh, organisms from the sea which is used in Ayurveda. One of them was a uh, Praval or coral. So you can see those pictures. Something from the second ground. One second. I think these are being We'll jump to the seaweed only now because I think uh, uh, what are we doing? Why are we calling them seaweed, marine algae? I'm sorry for taking longer for uh, the other uh, things, but now I'll come to the seaweed. Seaweed, why we call them seaweed? Are they really weeds? Actually, they are the vegetables. They are the jewels from the sea. So if you see here, this is Marvan Coast during monsoon time, where the rocks are fully covered with this beautiful green, long, long means they are more than a meter, meter two, almost sometimes two meters length uh, seaweed. And uh, what you see the black thing in between here, uh, they are uh, most, what do you call it, expensive uh, seaweed now or very exotic seaweed what uh, Everybody likes now sushi. They are the nori, and these are the ao nori, or they what they call in Japanese. It is a uh, ulva species, uh, which are also known as sea lettuce. 
So there are several uh, marine algal species. What is uh, Shevara Manjak? I, I had prepared this for uh, some Marathi uh, thing. So what do, you mean, what do you mean by seaweeds or algae? So algae are actually plants which are very uh, low in the uh, taxonomy of uh, plant kingdom because they don't have any root like or uh, leaf like flower uh, differentiation of tissues. There are only cortical or medullary tissues and uh, they have different, uh, although they are different in color. So based on their colors, their classification is done. So what you see here is uh, red and green uh, algae. So the green algae, they have like higher plants, they have uh, chlorophyll A and B and uh, their uh, storage product is starch. And uh, you can see here, this is uh, what I was telling about uh, Ulva lobata, which is found in Palgar area. And uh, this is uh, sea grapes, or uh, it is called as, uh, scientific name is color palm. So this looks like a grape, tastes like a grape, though it is a little bit sour, but uh, all these are edible. And uh, most of the thing, this is Srivardhan coastline, where in the intertidal area, this huge, uh, this is Andromorphi uh, halide. So you can see this boy is uh, our student, uh, Sigrendra, he is of almost five, five, seven uh, feet. And uh, this plant is also more than five feet long, one thallus can grow. So they are actually macroscopic algae, means uh, phytoplankton and they are belong to the same algae, but uh, these are the macroscopic. So we can call it them as a macroscopic algae or we can call them sea vegetables, not seaweeds. Then comes the brown algae. The color, you can see they are brown in color because they have the phycoxanthin present in it. And uh, again, there are different types. I have show, I'm showing here a few of them. Uh, this is called Padaina. They are very common also. Then this is uh, Dictyota, Spatoglossum, and this is Sargassum. Now, they are very important, economically important as the sargassum, most of the brown algae, they have alginic acid in it. Particularly the sargassum of, of our Indian coast, sargassum and one more turbinaria, uh, they can produce alginic acid, alginate, sodium alginate, everybody knows that it is used in many immunological studies, cryopreservation, then uh, even the pearl culture to make a dye, uh, for the in a pearl oyster, they use the alginate bead, sodium alginate beads. And because it is very inert in nature, it can be used uh, for cryopreservation and it forms a microcosm inside the bead so that the uh, cells can remain live in the minus 196 degree temperature also. And when it is brought back to the uh, normal temperature, it uh, doesn't affect the inner cosm because it doesn't react to any temperature. So that is why uh, the sodium alginate has very importance in the prior preservation studies. And uh, another, uh, everybody knows, uh, use, the most common use, I can tell you that it is used in the gum or uh, in the cement that is used in the uh, filling of teeth. Everybody is gone to dentist. Many of you must have had the fillings and the cleaning of the teeth. And the uh, filling what they give has the sodium alginate because it has the uh, characteristic to gel. Then there are, uh, the, how fast it is growing in the Srivardhan coast, this is, which is, uh, I found this Srivardhan coast is amazing because uh, they have certain gradation of uh, uh, algae very systematically. This is my area, this is my area, this is my area. So this area only Padana will grow, further only Sargassum will grow. So they have among themselves distributed in the intertidal area where who will grow where. And they are very systematic about it. Now this is a red algae. This is what I was telling you. This is porphyra or nori, uh, which everybody know as a sushi bar in Mumbai. They are very common. 
then this particular plant is two this is gelidium and this is gracilaria so these two red algal species they are very important as they are the source of most commonly used uh, product agar uh, being in uh, science college we all are knowing that uh, any microbiological uh, medium has to have agar in it to solidify so that agar is extracted from seaweed and uh, so far the red seaweeds are the only source to produce agar and uh, we have we have uh, almost 844 species along indian coast out of which only few are used and uh, gracilaria gelidella acerosa and gelidium these are the uh, three terocladia also one of the other species which are used for uh, agar production now recently we also have uh, another uh, species introduced uh, which is capophycus and uh, that is used for uh, aragonian production which is used in many other things agar we also have it and many of us we are not aware but uh, we do use agar in our food where you ask me is the our uh, jellies and ice creams where the agar or carrageenan is used in custard production custard making custard making uh, ice cream making jellies uh, because they are smoothening agents they make the uh, product very soft and very uh, jelly so they are the one of the important uh, food products i mean the food ingredients so it is used in food and ki lage choti jali asti teen mahine pan tikli nasti are pan ti moti halun upyog hai ka dog tela chalta ala pai can you make i request all the participants to mute please thank you thank you madam so in a food feed uh, fertilizer nowadays uh, fertilizer uh, seaweed liquid fertilizer is very much used apart from having the uh, importance as a food because it contain uh, quite a high protein content more than 35% protein is there in the porpira uh, then calcium is there very high in uh, alva it is also used as a fertilizer because it contains lot of antibacterial antimicrobial uh, characteristics which can help the crop to grow uh, without any infection and the uh, produce is very of high quality nowadays uh, of course the medicine is there many seeds are being uh, used uh, for uh, in drug production now there was a project going on since 82 uh, where almost all the coastal universities uh, or the coastal uh, many marine uh, csi institutes like uh, central salt and uh, chemical research institute then nio and uh, cdri and many other coastal uh, universities colleges were involved in it to uh, do the drugs from the sea So there was a huge project. First, it was Indo-US project. Then uh, the uh, Department of Ocean Development was sponsoring that project. So in that project, uh, most of the marine uh, organisms, including the uh, uh, corals, soft corals, sponges, and uh, seaweeds, mangroves, all have been seen to uh, see their. Uh, uh characteristics by the substances which are used and i tell you that uh, brown seaweed particularly padaina stoichospermum and spatoglossum they are having lot of phenolic and uh, by other by active substances to be used for uh, antimicrobial antibacterial and then uh, many are antimicrobial some are there even uh, used for uh, bird control so there are many uh, things that can be used as a, a medicine then uh, recently if you have seen there are uh, seaweed products are used in the uh, beauty products also so there are uh, in between there was ad uh, i don't know which uh, company it was but it was saying that red red seaweed shampoo so what 
what does it gives in the there are lipsticks there are many other uh, products are there which are cosmetics are there where the seaweeds are used because seaweed gives a glaze it gives the softness to the product i mean to the where we are using so that is why it is been used also in the uh, cloth industry to make the particularly sodium algin alginate is used in the uh, cloth industry to for the fire fighting uh, uh, dress dresses those who you the fire firefighters they uh, their dresses are glazed with the seaweed coatings because as i mentioned that it is inert to the uh, temperature so that is why it is used and papers and phycocolloids as i told agar alginate and uh, uh, these are the phycocolloids carrageenan these are the phycocolloids uh, which are used and uh, these are the food products which are there east asian countries they are mostly given uh, so here it is sushi you must have recognizing and these are the nori sheets or uh, and uh, almost every household uh, they eat seaweed for at least uh, one or two of their meals contain seaweeds every day so this is how we have in on thela hadgadi par work pan seaweed vikla jata this is in philippines and in philippines they use uh, they eat lot of uh, color pa also color pa when it is eaten very fresh it is very good but if it is a bit delayed in eating it can be harmful so there are a lot of uh, nutritional uh, characteristics and you can say 1 kilo of vegetable is equivalent to 10 gram 100 grams of uh, sea vegetables so how that is how important it is and that is how it is uh, nutritious to us which we are totally blind to it and in recent years uh, where the uh, land is falling short of uh, because most of the lands are going into the buildings we are falling short so the agriculture has to move towards uh, either fish production or in the seaweed algae production and at cip we had uh, developed this is a chutney which we had prepared and uh, this given but we also had prepared a uh, soup powder from ulwa we call it ulwa white and uh, but the commercialization and the actually to uh, popularized now it is popularized some kind uh, fashion as a fashion food but uh, that is in a one particular uh, societal uh, strata only but if we want to really popularize we have to uh, popularize among the middle class also and those who mostly need the nutrition is the lower strata of uh, people but it is very uh, difficult to that is one of the difficulty actually to popularize seaweed food because our food habits are not very uh, easy to change chakravarti sir will remember how much criticism i had got uh, when my name were giving the seaweed uh, chutney sandwiches so this is for the seaweed preparation of feed as a sea, a sea uh, using the sea vegetables for aqua feed one of our uh, student now he is uh, in uh, our kakinada center in charge uh, murali he had uh, used uh, seaweed as aqua feed for uh, rohu production katla and rohu and he found that uh, the growth is faster uh, uh, it is uh, disease resistance and also the uh, meat quality was also very good so that this was what was used then uh, cosmetics the worldwide scenario if you see there are more than 10000 species are there but uh, only very few have been used and these are some of the products like i was telling you uh, cosmetics and uh, jellies and medicines these are some of the tonics and medicines 
So worldwide, they are using in many things. These are of course in some ice creams, toothpaste. Biofertilizers, cattle feed, chicken feed, bioremediation. We are also trying to use it uh, in a different way. So when it comes to now, whatever is the source is there. Uh, not one thing is not all species are used. Number two is how long we are dependent on the natural condition because seaweed are such you know they are not uh, they are not they don't last for a longer time means in the nature their life cycle is for a very short time so they are they call them ephemeral plants ephemeral means uh, maybe six or eight months they are there apart from sargassum can be for biennial or uh, at the most uh, biennial yeah not more than two years it can be found in the nature so what is the, uh, how do we get it on the large quantity? Because all, not all the places are conducive for the civil production and how much should we depend on the natural source and where all we should be uh, collecting? That is the uh, question that comes to. So the best is the civil production uh, by cultivation methods. And uh, one thing that civil uh, cultivation does not need uh, any uh, very particular uh, thing, a lot of uh, investment is also actually not needed. It can be grown very easily in the open sea, but we, certain things has to be taken care of. Like uh, one thing is that it can be seen, you can see here, they are just growing on the rope. Simple rope is tied with the, and they are placed in the sea with the uh, weight down and uh, kept uh, floating in the sea or this kind of cement blocks or rocks can be used or the nets can be used. And simply you have to untwist the rope, the twist, insert the algae and place the rope uh, in the sea. But the condition should be such that the sea has to be calm and quiet. There should not be much human interaction. There should not be much wave action. But the high and low uh, tide has to be there the seaweed has to get exposed for some time, at least once in a day. So that particular uh, uh, precaution you have to take. And if there is very high wave action, then the road, ropes can be uh, cut off and can go uh, away from the uh, where you have tied. Most, one, one of the most important thing that the poaching people will simply take away your name. So one thing is important that you have to involve the local people or they have to come forward. In this uh, regard, the Tamil Nadu coast is very advanced because they are the self-help groups on that coastline. They, they come forward and they are doing, and also the Tamil Nadu coast, Gulf of Manar is very conducive because it doesn't have much wave action there. The tidal influence is also not very uh, different. Like here, if you see, uh, particularly when you go to the towards the southern coast of western uh, southern western coast, the continental shelf becomes narrower and narrower. So it is very steep. Uh, if you must have seen the Kerala coast, or if you still further go down south, uh, even the Ratnagiri, there are cliffs are there where the waves are just uh, breaking on it. And the, that particular type of coast is not very suitable. So it needs the kind of a bay or where the tidal influence is very uh, shallow. Also, the water has to be unpolluted if the seaweed has to be used for food grade. So uh, that also becomes very important uh, part. So these are the, some of the cultivation methods. This is the kappa vicus cultivation along the Gulf of Manar coast. And uh, simple ropeway cultivation, this is. Now in Japan, they are producing the seaweed on very large scale. And uh, this is porphyra cultivation. Porphyra has a very uh, unique life history. Now, algae, uh, some algae have a life history where, which involves two different types of uh, life stages, which is one of which is microscopic and one is macroscopic. So the microscopic stage, they 
they produce a spore and then they roll this kind of nades in the uh, tank when the spores get attached to this rope and then these ropes are then placed in the uh, another tank where they find the small sporlings or the seedlings are growing and then they, these seedlings are uh, put into the nature with the raft this is of course kappa ficus uh, these rafts are placed in the sea but uh, this kappa ficus type of uh, algae they don't need uh, this kind of investment because it has it doesn't have any sexual reproduction and it has only one type of uh, morphology which is macroscopic we can which we can see with the eyes and uh, they can grow simply with the uh, vegetative propagation so what is done is just to cut the uh, plant insert into the rope and this is a you can even use a broken fish net uh, to uh, grow this papaycus uh, and these are the bamboo rafts are made and the uh, seeds are in, uh, inserted the vegetative thalai are inserted and they are kept in the floating in the sea and papaycus uh, is very economical Uh, to grow because it grows just in 45 days you can have the crop ready so uh, for the coastal people although it is very economical for the ecology it is not very economical when we come to our maharashtra coast uh, there are certain areas uh, which are very conducive uh, for seaweed growth now many of us uh, you must have recognized this is sindhu durga port and uh, this is back of sindhu durga port where uh, this uh, algae um, uh, colorpa and uh, other uh, grasslaria grows very high if you see the front side like this is the opposite side of the main land here the water is very calm and bay kind of form but when you see the back side of the port the sea is very rough because there is a cliff there and uh, this side there is a bay where the tide you can see here actually very very uh, quiet and uh, during the low tide the whole area almost between the uh, island and the mainland it gets exposed so here there are certain places where we can grow the seaweeds and uh, once upon when i can say about uh, 10 15 years or so ago 15 20 years ago since i had been studying this area uh, when i joined nio in 1983 uh, till today i have uh, visited just uh, last 3 uh, 4 months ago there is a vast difference in the uh, socio economy of this uh, area where there was there were only two or three blow boats uh, that two sail boats were flying from the mainland to the port today there are at least uh, and more than 100 trips of the engine boats plus there are several uh, entu divers and uh, tourism which are uh, really devastating the diversity and once upon a time the whole area was full of sargassum which we could see uh, from the boat today is hardly seen anything so one has to really see where where we are losing our jewels so with this this is okha you can see it is uh, one of the uh, paradise for those who are working not only uh, seaweed but also in marine uh, biodiversity because this intertidal area is full of uh, giant sea anemone then uh, uh, aplysia sea hare and uh, a lot many 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 of the sponges sea urchins everything is there and uh, it's a really wonderful place so with this i would like to thank and once again uh, my sincere thanks to the organizing uh, dr dalvi he called me several times sometimes i answered him sometimes i did not answer means uh, i was a bit uh, out of station also and uh, thank you panse madam thank you uh, nandini madam uh, and uh, thank you all chakravarti sir so i am always thankful because he had always given me all the facilities uh, working in the working in uh, frm and uh, <laughs> we, we had a nice time together sir i thank you very much thank you i am mute sir
Thank you. Thank you all. Just for your thank you. Just Sorry, for sir. Welcome you. Welcome you to your very own thank college. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice seeing you. Yes. Very nice lecture by Gitanjali, and we were. It is very beneficial to the very much beneficial to the students. Yes. And for the benefit of uh, Principal Pansi and Dalvisa, you may not be knowing that we were very soft in the department of FRM, and she was a bit strict with the student. That is necessary at times. So we used to call her headmistress. <laughs> 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 Thank you, thank you, madam. Uh, thank you so much, madam, for uh, such a wonderful session. Uh, the session is open for interaction. If anybody wants to share their memories or thoughts, or maybe if they want to interact, uh, please unmute yourself and uh, interact. There are no questions, madam, here in the chat box right now. Uh, and if there are any questions from the student side, maybe in after the after they watch the YouTube link, uh, Hello? I may uh, convey it to you. Uh, I wanted to ask, madam, like uh, I had seen this Mary culture, especially algal culture in in um, the South Indian uh, coast, especially when I visited uh, Kanyakumari. They had this uh, system, small, small uh, um, uh, bamboo sticks they had near the coast and they were culturing. But in Maharashtra, I think it is lacking. So is there any specific reason for it? As I told you, uh, Maharashtra, the, we tried, I mean, I joined NIO in actually 83 in the civil cultivation project. So we tried in uh, Marwan first. But then uh, one day we stayed there also. One day we put our nets uh, in the where we found that it can be grown there. And uh, very next day we went, uh, nothing was there. Oh. Absolutely nothing. Then uh, after that, uh, we tried in uh, NIO Dona Paula only where we can actually monitor there. So along with Dr. Ingole, I had put his uh, muscle, green muscle uh, rafts. We put our seeds also there and there we managed to grow uh, sargassa. But then the project got over and uh, that was the end of it. Main thing is that the local community's uh, participation is very, very important. And aware, creating awareness for the importance of seaweed. Why? Uh, they, they know that seaweed are there. They know the shewa is there, but uh, they don't know how much uh, we have to, uh, why we should grow it and what is the use of it. So aware, creating awareness is very, very important, number one. Number two is that uh, why in Tamil Nadu? Because Tamil Nadu coast, uh, I remember in when I came back from uh, Japan in 92, 93, uh, I think they had approached, uh, somebody had approached Dr. Mutawale for the cultivation for uh, this thing, Kappa Ficus. And that time we were in the view of that Kappa ficus is, we, I am still of that view that it is an exotic species. So whether we should grow it at all. And uh, then it went to Sesem CRI and then they, uh, because they have a station at Mandapam, Sesem CRI. So they took up this and in Sesem CRI, they had always uh, been, they had huge uh, uh, group team working on CV. And uh, they had worked on the civil cultivation on Gujarat coast also. One, we have to think about the coastline. The morphology of coastline is very important for uh, civil cultivation. Maharashtra has very rugged uh, sea, uh, coastline and uh, they contain many estuaries and uh, many uh, cliff kind of areas. Where the cliffs are there, the, civil, uh, the sea is very rough. So there the cultivation will not be uh, much useful. And as I told you, people participation is very important. One photo I showed you where we had taken one small awareness program and uh, cultivation. When I joined in uh, CIP, also I had a project on civil cultivation where uh, I had chosen that place. And I, to my knowledge and to my experience, I feel that it will be very good for civil cultivation, but people are not interested in doing. Means I was trying to hire a person 
he can do his work he can do his study he only has to see once in a twice a day and see that the nets are there and see uh, that uh, not any other uh, grazing or any other algae is not growing at that time say in uh, 2007 8 i had that project and uh, 5000 rupees uh, as a payment for a technical assistant no one was ready to come no one so that is what my experience is that is why it is any government to... scheme subsidy has been provided uh, subsidies are provided now in pmss by 640 crores have been uh, given for civil cultivation Uh, prime minister modi so much uh, promoting civil cultivation but uh, there are uh, very less takers mainly because uh, i what my uh, uh, this thing is observation is that in maharashtra we are not very poor the coastal people are not really very poor that is why they don't need it and of course awareness is very much needed okay thank you so much uh, deshmukh and madam i just want to thank you and uh, thanks for taking me down the memory lane i had i was with nio for four years and okay. you mentioned unta wale unta wale student vijaya ambi you must be knowing her that is why i thought that when is the madhumita when somebody wrote in chat uh, i think i left in 1988 okay i, I was i was with dr wag i was mcmrd mcmrd yes So Vijay, I'm still in touch with Vijay, and I just was remembering your memory. She telling me that you had one uh, cupboard in the gym. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You remember? <laughs> okay, okay. Where were you staying then? Uh, I had left actually in 1988. I got fellowship to go to Japan. I was so, there. Actually, I think you must have gone with Lodi or that Lod. I I went. Uh, see, Anil had. Before after Anil I went. Okay, Anil. Okay, Anil. Yeah. After Anil I went there. Okay. And uh, that time I left hostel because uh, anyway there was uh, some uh, movement like uh, three people together. So I left hostel. I was staying with Pillu, and then I went to Pune, and then I went to uh, Japan. Okay. So I went in '93 again. So by then I think you had moved out. So But, what? Uh, I remember Vijay telling about your cover. <laughs> Of all the things you remember, my cover. We are still in touch. We are still in touch with each other. Yeah, yeah. Vijay is still in touch with me. Vijay is still in touch with me. Sure. Okay. Okay. Thanks for taking me down the memory lane. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Somebody you. mentioned, you know, then I recollected. Yes, I remember name Madhu Mathi, Madhu Mita, Madhu Mathi, Madhu Madhu. I remember. Madhu Mathi. Just to talk uh, about many other things also, but that cupboard was novelty because I had also brought similar cupboard. <laughs> so okay. <she> was, <laughs> in my hostel yes i had that covered <laughs> yes okay we might have seen each other but that time my uh, madam there is a coil okay yeah i think uh, this one has read uh, written something yes. uh, uh, there is a question from uh, uh, golden quarter sir he appreciates your uh, presentation and he wants <laughs> to know where he can buy the chutney and soup he wants to uh, try out those it again chutney is freshly made so it cannot be available <laughs> but let me tell you and uh, then to gitanjali madam she will tell the recipe yeah. recipe is very simple as we made kathimbir chutney the same only instead of kathimbir you use uh, seaweed that's all and uh, once there was one uh, uh, small uh, by nfdb we had one uh, small top also that time sir you remember we have served ulva uh, pakoda also dr lagras time uh, we had one day session on seaweed so that time i had served ulva uh, pakoda and nobody could uh, say that it is not palak pakoda uh, madam i have one suggestion hello can i be heard yes sir yes sir uh, uh, one suggestion is uh, if it is possible for the government and for the institutions to pay some amount to the local people for the culture of algae and i think uh, if some remuneration is uh, given to them uh, perhaps uh, uh, this may work because i remember one institution in mulund i think you might be knowing vijay kelkar college uh, they are having for perfumery industry and they are giving the saplings of certain uh, 
species of plants uh, which produce the perfumes and that is distributed to many farmers. They are paid for that. And uh, once the plants grow, uh, that is used by the institution, by the uh, factory for the production of perfumes. So on that line, if it is possible uh, at the government level or at the institution level, uh, I think one, one may give a thought. Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampadan Yojana has uh, uh, distinct uh, provision for uh, seaweed cultivation and uh, the forms and uh, are available with state uh, fisheries department uh, where they can fill up the form and uh, give necessary things and the money can be given to them. It is already there in existence. Okay, good, 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 good. How far is the success of this project, this program? <laughs> That uh, government, <laughs> the state government. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you, madam. Nice uh, to see your presentation, and I got my biodiversity, very biodiversity, <laughs> in our real estate Thank you. Uh, Goldin is back in Maharashtra. He was there. Goldin, not top no line, and he's. Yes, uh, Goldin sir is saying since uh, he's now working along the Maharashtra coast, he will surely like to try out those check me. Yeah, Goldin can come and see or I can also, we can uh, sometime meet. He's a very active member in the coastal area. Yes, indeed. Okay, once again, I would like to thank uh, and my respect, pay my respect to sir. And uh, thank you, Nandini Madam. I think she is also off now gone. Uh, thank you very uh, much. I think, uh, Madam, there are no more questions as such. Uh, so I, I can conclude the session here. Principal Madam. Chitesh, just yes, one thing about the chutney recipe. Yes. Instead of pudina, you can use padina. That's all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You do very so, so simple to remember. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes. Point noted, sir. <laughs> sir is always witty about like this. <laughs> yes. Uh, principal, madam. Uh, principal, madam, shall we conclude the session? Yes, please. Yes, yes, madam. Thank you so much. Uh, so, we are here uh, concluding this session. So, on behalf of the Department of Zoology, Marsh and the College of Arts, Science and Commerce, I, Dr. Rishikesh Dadavi, thank you, Dr. Jyotirmay Deshmukh, uh, Dr. Sushant Chakrabadi, sir, Mrs. Madhumadhi Bhaskarwan, madam, for sharing their memories of uh, Dr. Vinay Deshmukh, sir. I also thank you, our guest speaker, Dr. Gitanjali Deshmukh, madam, for sparing her valuable time and sharing her valuable memories of Dr. Deshmukh, sir, and also her knowledge on marine coastal biodiversity of India, and sharing your work on marine algae, their culture aspects, and value addition for economic gains. Thank you so much, madam, for such an elaborate, elaborative and fabulous presentation. I take this opportunity to, opportunity to thank uh, our vice president of MDES, Mrs. Kavalorma, madam, for providing the necessary facilities and principal madam, Dr. Chaya Pandse, for being a constant support and encouragement for conducting such programs. I also thank you my departmental colleagues, HOD of Zoology Department, Dr. Vaishali Somani madam, Ms. Suprita Nai for their consistent support. I thank you all the participants from across the nation, teachers from the Mumbai University and family members of Deshmukh sir for their presence. Uh, I thank you uh, our former principal of MD College, Dr. Tiwari sir, uh, Dr. Golian Kodras uh, sir, uh, Dr. Gulabra Rajay sir, who is the member of BOS in Zoology, University of Mumbai, uh, Dr. Subhash Jonde sir, Amod Tamane, uh, Ashok Kadam sir, Dr. Kiran Mali, Dr. Vishal sir for their presence. I also thank you Mr. Ayappan Pillai and his team for the technical support. Last but not the least, I thank you all the students for their enthusiastic participation. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Madhu, Thanks. I will let you know, Vijaya, that I saw you. And, you know, I was going to tell you that I still remember the taste of porphyra soup she used to make in the lab. 
Yes. <laughs> I myself, can you please stop recording? I will talk to Vijaya also. I will also talk to Vijaya. <laughs> <laughs>